politicians. So Chara Dasha, I have seen, Chara Dasha is a bit different the way it functions in compared to Vinshotri. When I say different, I don't mean the calculation part. So Chara Dasha, as you all would know, it is a Dasha of the sign. So it is like Chara Mahadasa. Sign, sign aspects and everything. Yes, yes. So Chara Mahadasa is there, then Chara Antardasa is there. So that is uh, that is very famous in the Jaimini tradition, especially. And within that, I have seen uh, for Chara Dasha, the planets give results as per the degrees. So, for example, mm -hmm. the planet with the least degree is known as Dara Karak. And yes. the planet bit above that is called uh, Ganati Karaka. And the planet with the highest degree is known as Atma Karaka. So I have, whenever I use Chara Dasha, so, uh, and before explain, discussing Chara Dasha, I would like to say, whichever Dasha system you use, you see, th these Dasha systems are not fighting with each other. Sometimes people think, oh, my Vimshotri is telling this, and my... Charadasa is telling opposite. What will happen? No, it is not like that. That they will cut each other and nothing will happen in your life. They all gel together. Yes, so they will they are ultimately acting to give you the flavor which you are feeling ultimately. But the but the thing is their focal areas are different. Their focus is different. So in one part of life you will feel okay, this is happening, and in one area you will feel okay that 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 that, that is also happening. So, for example, for uh, this this Chaladasha I have seen, if uh, somebody has a very strong Jupiter or if the Lagna and the ninth house are very well connected, and if the fifth house also supports optionally, but even if it does, don't, does not support, it's still fine. Then I have seen Chaladasha's giving more better results physically also than uh, Vimshot three Dasha's. Because Chaladasha's uh, they they talk totally at the soul level basically what kind of feeling you are undergoing so therefore i have seen somebody if they run the dasha of a dara karak for example this i have seen again and again and again and again and again hundred thousand times i've seen suppose somebody is of a marriageable age suppose and they will run the dasha of even if it's chara antar dasha it's still fine so suppose they are running uh, the dasha of suppose Leo for example, and in Leo in their lagna chart, their dara karak is placed. Suppose Mercury is the dara karak, but dara karak is placed there. So then I have seen one hundred percent of the times they if they if they are around of that age and they are thinking to get married, then they will definitely end up meeting somebody definitely. But now, if in the Vimshotri you are running the sixth house, then you will not get married physically to that person. That, that, so it is happening. The both of the things, both the things are happening simultaneously. It is not and that uh, Vimshotri is saying sixth house, so you can never meet somebody. It is not like that because Vimshotri will tell you physically what ends up happening ultimately. Okay. So now that, that, that situation is very precarious. Suppose your Mahadasha Lord is denying you relationships or marriage. And then this uh, Chara Dasha at a soul level, suppose your Dara Karak uh, Chara Mahadasha starts. What, five years, ten years, how long? <laughs> then what will happen is you will always either like that person or you will keep finding somebody you like or you don't like. If the Dara Karak is afflicted, I have seen you meet people you don't like. <laughs> Which means you meet people that you absolutely hate. You feel the why in the universe did I meet this person at all? My life was so so much better without this person. So then in Vimshotri, what happens? Ultimately, uh, you have to see Vimshotri to see if that is physically manifesting or not. And I have also seen the uh, in Vimshotri the Jaimini Jaimini aspects also work very beautifully. I have seen. So for example, the uh, movable signs aspect, the uh, fixed signs, other signs, fixed signs, yeah. Yes, and vice versa also, and the dual signs aspect aspect the other dual signs. So I have seen. Uh, suppose somebody has. Uh, 
suppose somebody has this Venus in Leo, as we discussed, somebody is earning Leo Dasha. And suppose somebody's uh, Capricorn is activated. So then uh, this Venus from Leo, because Leo is a fixed sign, it aspects the other movable signs apart from Cancer, because Cancer is next to Leo. So then Capricorn is another movable sign. So Venus aspects Capricorn. So then what happens? Uh, I have seen. Uh, then what happens is not that you are uh, you are actually getting an opportunity to meet somebody and talk to somebody, but uh, you kind of like somebody from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you 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 have not got some opportunity you know to talk or to communicate with that person or even if you try it doesn't happen but I, and i have also seen if the uh, seventh house from the darakara gets activated then also this happens i have seen and then we have uh, the the situation of the atma karak especially so now many times people think atma karak is a competitor to the lagna lord they think like this they think, oh, both are fighting. <laughs> and they think because uh, sun is the natural uh, Atma Karak for everybody, of course. He is naturally the Atma Karak. So, so now suppose uh, you are Taurus Lagna and your Venus is somewhere <laughs> and your Atma Karak is Mercury and you know, your sun is your natural Atma Karak. So these three are in different places. So then what happens? You know, there is like this, people think that uh, they are fighting each, each other. No, it is not like that. The Lagna Lord, uh, irrespective of any Dasha system you use, it will always tell you what affects you very quickly, I have seen. It is like wherever the Lagna Lord is sitting, <clears throat> that area is like, uh, what you say, a spark. So suppose somebody's Lagna Lord is in the fifth house. Then immediately he gets children or he falls in love. You know, it's like he feels as if his life has started suddenly. Otherwise, he will feel as if he's just <laughs> sleeping. He has nothing to do with other things. You know, it is the Lagna Lord is like that because that is the house which because the Lagna Lord is sitting there. So it's like the body is sitting there. You know? So he feels that his body has become now lively. He feels that uh, I'm starting to live again. <laughs> but suppose now your Atma Karak is placed somewhere else. And the Atma Karak has to be judged very properly, not just superficially. Oh, my Atma Karak is Venus, you know, so I am always running after, you know, love and romance. It is not like that. In fact, I have seen sometimes if the Atma Karak is afflicted or it is in debility, the person is running away from all these things. Like I have, I have seen so many horoscopes with uh, Atma Karak Venus, and that's very funny because Venus is the Dara Karak. He's supposed to be <laughs> the Dara Karak, but now somehow he's becoming the Atma Karak. So, so now Venus Atma Karak can mean uh, ignoring the placement of Venus. It can mean that your definition of self, which is the Sun, which is the Atma comes from relationships or other people, which is not a very great thing because then others can end up disappointing. But now suppose uh, this Venus is in Virgo, being the Atma Karak, then it can happen that uh, you are not very much interested in seeking that validation from others. Or I have seen if this Venus is afflicted by Saturn, degreekly if it is very close, then the opposite is happening. You are running away from relationships. Because, because this Saturn has given you some level of suffering because of you are again on mute, I think. Actually, there is a marriage going on just right in the grounds and there is lots of noise over here. Okay, okay, yeah, that's okay. So is it okay if I mute it? Like oh. otherwise... Okay, okay, yes. Yeah, so whenever I need to speak, I'll just... Okay, okay, sure. Yes. So Can you the, hear the noise? Uh, no, the I, music and all that. Yeah. No. Yeah. So that's what I was saying. If suppose this Atma Karak Venus, if it is mm -hmm. afflicted, not not in a very normal sense, but if it is very severely afflicted, I have seen. 
no aff- affliction means i generally define se- severe affliction as more than one malice so sometimes i've seen uh, this venus is atmakara and saturn and mars or saturn and rahu especially saturn and rahu <laughs> but these both are considered to be friends then also then it is called as an affliction uh in in my knowledge i have seen wherever saturn is sitting or aspecting because he is the original karaka for the dusthanas so he will so it's like saying you know that uh, even if somebody is your friend but if he is diseased even if you go and embrace him you you will also get some you know <laughs> so so that that i have always seen and uh, so therefore yes a saturn venus aspects can have uh, other positive uh insight so what i have seen is if this if this is there in the chart of a very great sadhu or a spiritual personality then the person is not exactly running away from materialistic pleasure he is like he is like okay if it is there it's good if it is not there it's fine i won't keep sitting and crying oh i didn't get this ye nahi mila wo nahi mila ha ah, but if this is in the chart of a materialistic person then <laughs> then then i have seen all ways you know wherever that saturn venus as axis is the person is always inquiring because you know, especially when planets like jupiter and venus are afflicted it is like a very uh, precarious situation because these two are the greatest benefits according to parashara so if these two are only afflicted then i have it is like saying the there is no reason to live that doesn't mean you go and die you feel like dying i don't mean that but it's like saying uh even if you do certain things you feel that the the return i am not getting actually <laughs> i mean i am getting but not the way i expected actually but what yeah what we are meant to get we are not yes 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 or it is like below expectation so that therefore uh, that is why even uh, the great acharyas in our uh, uh, different paramparas they also encourage that don't keep so much expectation from the material world <laughs> because this material world does not shy away from disappointing anybody and you will never be an exception to it. so that that's the greatness of uh, the vedic tradition and especially all the religions you know they they make you prepared for these malefics especially if you see the vedic culture you, you will see you know first uh, first five years the uh, the kid is in the home you know, enjoying with all the family members relatives and he, he will do all the naughty stuff and you know, everybody will like but then the same child if he does that at the age of 10 then people will say oh he is very immature and the same child if he behaves very maturely at the age of 3 then people will be like what the hell is wrong with you man <laughs> you know you should go around doing uh, f- uh, pranks and all this funny stuff like hanuman ji used to do to the rishis and you are going on you know doing talking all this serious stuff you know we don't like it you know you should do later not now and then the opposite is also true to if you are at the age of 10 or 15 and you are still going on all doing all those stuff then people say oh grow up mr <laughs> then we have the life in the ashram you know the they used to go to the guru's ashram and they used to take a training of celibacy brahmacharya and then they would enter married life grihastha ashram at the age of 25 then for 25 years they would stay so brahmachari ashram is what basically it's mars <laughs> you know so the beginning part of life it is like they are experiencing mars and jupiter because the guru is also there so it's like very strict discipline a lot of sense control a lot of discipline a lot of rules regulations restrictions you know you have to eat only what is cooked in the ashram you cannot eat anything outside you know? you cannot eat meat you cannot eat this you can't do that you cannot mingle with the opposite sex and now at 25 if a person uh, continues to be a brahmachari or then he gets married so then when he is getting married what is happening you know venus is getting activated basically and then what happens he he or she will have children like that and then they will have a home and then finally uh, they they will they will take vanaprastha 
So Vanaprastha is what? Vanaprastha is actually Jupiter basically. Nothing else. <laughs> because during Vanaprastha, you are trying to withdraw from your material life. The husband and the wife, they are trying to withdraw gradually. And then finally there is Sanyas. You know, and Sanyas is like Saturn, total detachment. <laughs> and Saturn is also old age. That is also old age. So, so it, it, it's very harmonious. So the Vedic culture does not uh, run away from any malefic. But today's culture, it has become totally the opposite. It is only Venus, 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 Mercury, Venus, Rahu. That is all they have. Nothing else. That is why they fear so much, my God. These malefics. You know, people, I, I know they say, oh my God, sir, uh, my wife is going to, uh, so, I mean, my wife got some promotion, but the boss said, one year you have to stay at that place. So how can I stay one year without my spouse? I will die. <laughs> Why the person feels like this? Because the person has not experienced Mars. He has not experienced what, what is it like to stay in the Brahmacharya Ashram alone. So then he, he cannot deal with Mars, you see. <laughs> so then Mars becomes a malefic, which is like, you know, piercing him, giving him loneliness. You know, look, you are alone. Look, he is enjoying. Look, she is enjoying. Look how miserable you are. You know, you are just lonely, doing WhatsApp, Facebook or Instagram. Everybody is having Christmas out there. And then there are people who fear old age so much. Why? Because Most of them. I, Yes. Because they have not prepared for it. Because they, they they don't know what will happen at the old age, and many times people think that we can you know evade old age by doing you know, different kinds of things. So the thing is, we should prepare whenever we see because we know the standard line for Vimshottari. It is starting with uh, Ketu, and then it comes to Jupiter, and then it comes to Saturn. So whoever we are, either whichever place we are, our life journey is going to be like this. It is, it is, that is, that trend is fixed. Now, of course, we might be born with moon in, suppose, Hasta Nakshatra. Yeah. Then our Dasha sequence will start differently. It will start from the moon, of course. Then, then it will be, but at the end, uh, because everybody is a spirit soul, their journey will be similar. So they will have the same pattern in life because of this. And that, therefore, an intelligent person should always uh, prepare for the old age or you know, as as uh, one spiritual leader used to say, he was asked a question, sir, can you define life? <laughs> he said, life is a preparation for death. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah, because that, that will decide where you will go. So you should leave your, lead your life in such a way, live in such a way that you can live in an exemplary way. <laughs> So anyways, coming back to uh, the Chara Dasha, as I said, if there are apparent contradictions between the Vimshottari and the Chara Dasha, then we have to sit and resolve and we have to see. So many times uh, people say that I want something else, but I am getting something else. <laughs> what I want is not happening in this area, but in some other area of life, something else is happening, which, which is okay. But I don't want it. I am not obsessed about it. So that can be a flavor of different dasha systems. So another dasha we have is uh, the Narayan dasha. Narayan dasha is also very important. Narayan dasha is very rarely used. So some, sometimes people ask this question. At least in India I have heard. Uh, in Hindi I can say, Pata nahi Bhagwan kya chate. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what God wants. So the so astrologically the answer is very clear. Narayan Dasa. <laughs> if you if you want to know what God what God wants you to do, then we always take the Narayan Dasa. <laughs> <laughs>